Summary of Beloved A heart-wrenching, Pulitzer Prize-winning masterpiece, by Toni Morrison, written and narrated by Janky Mind. Introduction Beloved is a haunting and profound exploration of the enduring impact of slavery on the African-American psyche. Set against the backdrop of post-Civil War Ohio, the story follows Seath, a former slave who escaped the brutal Sweet Home Plantation in Kentucky. Her struggles with a haunting past manifest in a mysterious and vengeful spirit that disrupts her newfound freedom. Toni Morrison, already acclaimed as one of the most significant African-American voices in modern literature, solidified her status with Beloved's publication in 1987. While her earlier work, Song of Solomon, earned her the National Book Critics Circle Award, it is Beloved that stands as Morrison's true masterpiece. Going beyond her exploration of the African-American experience, Beloved combines a relentless scrutiny of the enduring legacy of slavery with a compelling narrative featuring complex characters and rich symbolism. Morrison takes readers on a haunting yet essential journey into the depths of human suffering, resilience, and redemption. Beloved doesn't shy away from the harsh realities of slavery, it is raw, unapologetic, and shocking. The novel exposes the dehumanizing brutality of slavery and its lasting impact on both the enslaved individuals and their descendants. It compels readers to delve into the minds of those affected by slavery, forcing them to witness moral dilemmas and difficult choices stemming from the brutality inflicted upon them. As the narrative unfolds, readers encounter Seath, an African-American woman navigating the challenges of newfound freedom after escaping slavery. The pivotal moral dilemma she faced during enslavement continues to shape her life and the course of the plot. The audiobook provides an insightful overview of Beloved's narrative, connecting it to the novel's overarching themes and symbols. A word of caution precedes the exploration, acknowledging the novel's depiction of scenes involving rape, violence, and murder. Readers are advised to approach the material with care, as Beloved's powerful narrative is sure to evoke emotional responses. Be prepared for a profoundly moving experience that will leave a lasting impact. Chapter 1, Memories of Trauma and Slavery It's 1873. Slavery has been illegal in the United States for just eight years. Seath is a former female slave living in Cincinnati, Ohio with her daughter Denver. Her mother-in-law, Baby Suggs, lived with them until she passed away. Before her death, Seath's two sons Howard and Buglar ran away, likely due to the malevolent ghost haunting their home at 124 Bluestone Road. Denver is fond of the ghost, believing it to be her deceased sister. On the day the novel begins, Paul D., a man Seath knew from their time as enslaved people at the Sweet Home Plantation in Kentucky, pays Seath a visit. His presence brings back painful memories long buried in Seath's mind. The narrative alternates between the present day in Cincinnati and flashbacks of events at Sweet Home nearly two decades earlier. Through fragmented flashbacks, Seath's history as an enslaved woman slowly emerges. She was born in the South to an African mother she never knew and separated from her siblings at an early age. When she was 13, Seath was sold to the Garners, the comparatively benevolent owners of the Sweet Home Plantation. The enslaved men there lusted after the young Seath but never touched her. She married another enslaved man named Hallie, who'd purchased his mother baby Suggs' freedom. Seath and Hallie had two sons, Howard and Buglar, and an unnamed daughter. When Seath escaped Sweet Home, she was pregnant with her fourth child, Denver. After the passing of the kind Mr. Garner, his sadistic brother-in-law known only as schoolteacher, took over operations at Sweet Home, making conditions unbearable. Schoolteacher's nephews beat and raped Seath, stealing her breast milk. Her husband Hallie watched in horror but was unable to intervene. The enslaved people, including Seath and Hallie, 
planned their escape. From the outset of the novel, Morrison makes the themes that she wants to explore clear for readers. This isn't just a novel about slavery, it's about the psychological consequences of enslavement which, as the book makes clear, linger for a lifetime, even once it has been legally abolished. To communicate this, Morrison chooses to have two main storylines throughout Beloved, one in the present day at 124, Bluestone Road, and one which she recreates through flashbacks, which tells the story of Seath's experience of slavery. Chapter 2, A Failed Escape and a Dark Turn Under schoolteacher's reign, life at Sweet Home became impossible. Under a tortuous barrage of verbal, physical, and sexual abuse, a group of enslaved people decide to plan an escape. They hope to evade capture by staying off the beaten path and sticking to the woodlands, gradually making their way to the northern states of America where slavery is illegal. But schoolteacher and his cruel nephews foil their plans, capturing Paul D. and another man called Sixo. Paul D. is imprisoned and forced to work on a chain gang, shackled to other prisoners day and night. Sixo, meanwhile, is tied to a tree, tortured, and executed. Although Seath wasn't part of the escape attempt, schoolteacher's paranoid and sadistic psyche convinces him that she helped them. For this, he viciously whips the pregnant Seath. Having been subject to rape, physical abuse, and psychological torture, Seath is at breaking point. With her children, she manages to escape to Cincinnati, where her mother-in-law Baby Suggs is living as a freed woman. By the time they arrive at Baby Suggs's house, Seath and her children are starving, ill, and exhausted, having walked hundreds of miles barefoot. They're all close to death. They enjoy 28 blissful days of recovery, freedom, and community. But schoolteacher's determined malice isn't to be beaten. Tracking them down to Baby Suggs's house, he tries to reclaim Seath and her children. And, despairing at the thought of her children having to endure a life of enslavement, Seath takes them into Baby Suggs's shed and tries to kill them. Three survive this attempt, but Seath successfully slits the throat of her older daughter. Soon after, Seath is imprisoned for murder. One of the most unique aspects of Beloved is how its climax comes much earlier than a traditional novel structure. It's in this part that the brutality of slavery, and the pivotal moment of Seath murdering her daughter, arrive. By doing this, Morrison allows herself more space to explore the repercussions of the climax than most authors. This creates a burning sense of injustice and an understanding of how the institution of slavery is so vicious that it can push the victims themselves to do vicious things. Morrison is making a comment on the tragically ironic, dehumanizing aspect of slavery, when someone is treated as less than a human, they'll act as less than a human in order to prevent their loved ones from suffering a similar fate. Chapter 3, Mysterious Happenings and an Unknown Presence After the activist efforts of Americans who don't agree with the injustices of slavery, Seath is eventually freed from prison. She returns to baby Suggs, who's fallen into a deep depression. And because of its dark recent past, the black community has shunned Seath's home at 124, Bluestone Road. Around this time, Paul D. finds his way to Seath's home in Cincinnati. After years of torture in a chain gang he's floated aimlessly around America, living in poverty and struggling to find even poorly paid jobs. His arrival kicks off the major events happening in the present-day storyline. For a while, strange things have been happening at 124, Bluestone Road, things will move of their own accord, and whispers can be heard in darkened corners of the house. On the day Paul D. arrives, though, a storm erupts in the kitchen. Tables are shaking, dishes are exploding, and knives are flying. After some effort, Paul D. manages to chase the ghost out of the home. Paul D. begins living at the home, and it looks as if he, Seath, and Denver have a promising future together as a family, 
they might be able to start healing the wounds left behind from their previous lives. But one night, as they make their way home from a carnival, they find a young woman sleeping on the steps. She says her name is Beloved. Both Seath and Denver believe that Beloved is the reincarnation of Seath's murdered daughter. What's more, Beloved seems to believe that too. She develops an intense, obsessive attachment to Seath, she can barely bring herself to leave her side. Denver, craving the sister she's always missed, is delighted by Beloved's presence. Only Paul D. and Beloved don't get on. After his fight with the spirit in the kitchen, Paul D. is suspicious of Beloved's motives, while Beloved can't bear to see the attention and intimacy that Seath gives to Paul D. At this point in the plot, Denver begins to grow into a significant character. She's immature, isolated, and doesn't have many friends, which Morrison wants us to understand is the result of her mother's trauma. This helps to underscore the far-reaching consequences of slavery on successive generations. Another key theme throughout Beloved is motherhood, and Denver's character helps the author explore this. Her growing attachment to Beloved highlights the complex dynamics of motherhood, Denver's longing for companionship, and Beloved's role as a surrogate sister, reveal how the characters seek solace and connection amid shared suffering. Another significant aspect of Beloved is the portrayal of the African-American community in post-Civil War Ohio. Baby Suggs, Seed's mother-in-law, is a central figure in this community, serving as a spiritual leader and healer. Her presence offers a contrast to the horrors of slavery, showcasing hope and resilience in the face of adversity. But her eventual fall into depression serves as a reminder of the pervasive and lasting effects of slavery on even the strongest individuals. Chapter 4, The Slow Road to the Tragic Ending As we enter the final part of the story, the pace and dramatic action accelerate. It starts as the tension between Paul D. and Beloved builds to a climax. First, she begins throwing him around the house without even touching him. Finally, one day when Seath is out she seduces Paul D. Despite trying everything in his power to resist, he loses control of his body, as if Beloved is commanding it for him. After this incident, Paul D. leaves 124, Bluestone Road. Meanwhile, Seath and Beloved's relationship grows more intense every day. Beloved's appetite for Seath's love and attention is insatiable, and Seath, driven by the guilt of her murder, spends every waking moment obsessively tending to Beloved's needs and demands. With heartbreaking clarity, we become aware of Seath's slow descent into madness and ill health as she desperately tries to fulfill Beloved's appetite for her. Soon, she's too weak to leave her bed. Beloved grows more manipulative and cruel by the day, while Seath pleads with her to understand why she killed her. Meanwhile, Denver has changed. She no longer admires Beloved, and the joy of being reunited with her lost sister has evaporated. She's seen how Beloved has begun draining the vitality, the very soul, out of her mother and goes out to seek help. Denver visits her old schoolteacher, a sympathetic white woman named Lady Jones. With her help, the community organizes an attempt to exorcise Beloved from 124, Bluestone Road. But just as they arrive at the house, Denver's boss also arrives to take her to her first day of work. Seath, deranged and exhausted, mistakes Denver's boss for schoolteacher, and tries to attack him with an ice pick. The group which has come to exorcise Beloved manages to restrain Seath, but once the dust settles on the scene, Beloved is nowhere to be seen. She's vanished, and she'll never return. Despite her parasitic presence, Seath mourns Beloved for the second time in her life. She's so weak and broken that she retires to baby Suggs's old bed in order to die. On her deathbed, Paul D. comes to visit Seath to say one final goodbye. On this sad note, the story ends.
The town and the surviving characters forget Beloved like an unpleasant dream during a troubled sleep. One of the most fascinating things about this complex novel is that because it contains two main storylines, we're treated to two climaxes. The first was early on in the book when Seath kills the infant Beloved, as Morrison reconstructs the characters' pasts through a series of fragmented flashbacks. Now, it comes when the community gathers to exorcise Beloved, and Paul D's visit to Seath on her deathbed. In this final, hauntingly tragic climax, Morrison again highlights just how much the brutality of slavery can affect the lives of the enslaved long after they're free, and how something so beautiful and pure as motherhood and childhood aren't free from its corrupting influence. Summary Seath, a former enslaved person, is still wrestling with the traumas of her past. When her plantation is taken over by a barbarous new overseer called Schoolteacher, she flees with her children to the northern states where slavery is illegal. Schoolteacher tracks them down, and in the final moments as he's closing in, Seath murders one of her children to protect her from a life of physical and sexual abuse. But once Seath is freed from her imprisonment through the help of abolitionists, a mysterious young woman named Beloved appears at her home. Believing that Beloved is the soul of her reincarnated daughter, Seath spends every waking moment trying to make amends for her murder, even as Beloved grows increasingly demanding and spiteful. Although Seath's local community helps to exorcise Beloved from the property, it's too late for Seath. Broken and exhausted, she retires to her bed to give up the ghost. This audiobook summary was brought to you by Janky Mind, we hope you enjoyed it.